name is Brittany Chevalier McIntyre, and I'm the executive editor at Lux Interiors and Design Magazine. Thanks for tuning in to our Maker segment with Hammerton Lighting on Design TV. I'm so happy to be here today with Levi Wilson, VP of Design at Hammerton Lighting. Levi has in his family's ornamental iron shop in Salt Lake City. He founded Hammerton Lighting 25 years ago in a neighbor's garage and drew inspiration for early products from a trip to Timberline Lodge in design ideas from great understanding of informs his ability to lights. One of his many talents is his remarkable rough design concepts into detailed freehand sketches drawn entirely to scale. Levi, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Brittany, for having us. Of course. So first of all, happy 25th birthday to Hammerton. It's such an exciting milestone during a truly remarkable time. It is definitely a remarkable time. So one way to celebrate 25 years, this is definitely unusual, um, For but sure. it's been a, been a pretty interesting journey. So as a company and your offerings, your message and products are extremely relevant today. Hammerton initially made waves by serving the fast growing second home market back in the 90s. And today I have to say that sentiment rings true more than ever everyone is really seeking their own special refuge. So would you like to speak briefly about Hammerton's desire to bring the outdoors inside and really how you started this beloved brand? Absolutely. So um, starting with kind of how Hammerton began, you already talked about a little bit about my background. Um, uh, my father was a blacksmith, um, but my mother was also a seamstress. So I kind of experienced both worlds, um, kind of overalls and high heels. And so I saw both the brute force of what was necessary to uh, form still, but also the finesse of what's needed for fashion and the clothing. And so between those two, um, it was very interesting about bringing, um, learning those two skills and bringing those into kind of what is currently Hammerton. And the reason I bring that up is because um, I think there's always good contrast when we think about materials and design. And so when I think about the outdoors and the indoor environment, I think the two are hand in hand. Um, I think they both require certain elements to be brought into a space. A good example of this would be a hardwood floor versus a concrete floor. Um, even though we do see that in some environments, um, a, wood, a nice wood floor in a home just brings a lot of warmth and character to a space. And so in the Hammerton design, I do the same thing. I try to bring influences of the outdoor elements into the design, um, whether that be in the materials or the design itself. Absolutely. Uh, and Hammerton's core principle of exploring that intersection of the natural and modern world is really only one of the incredible examples that sets you apart. Customization has really been at the forefront of your business and custom to Hammerton, it really means anything is possible. You yes. Have, yes, you do. And you have dozens of examples to demonstrate this where you've actually created an entire custom line of light fixtures for a particular residence or hospitality project. For example, a, a home in Las Vegas, which today is owned by the magician David Copperfield. Can you tell us a, a little bit about your process for taking the customer's unique aesthetic and functional requirements and bringing them to life through lighting? Sure. So on the custom side, when you mention anything is possible, that truly is a broad definition, but it does describe what we do quite well because in the design world, there's a lot of modifications. Uh, a lot of times somebody will change their sofa by just changing the color. But when we say anything is possible, we mean anything from, this, from the ground up. They can start completely new. So the home that you're mentioning as an example, there's many features that we included for this particular homeowner 
is I went out and I met with this homeowner and truly started to understand what he was looking for in his home. And part of this was his need and desire to bring in the natural elements, but also bring in a bit of warmth and comfort into the home. So we had a little bit of a Zen um, feel to the entire project, which allowed us to bring certain characteristics into the design. And then on the material side, we had certain elements where we brought in a, um, an onyx material that he um, was very involved with the sourcing, the, the, the color, the type of stone, where it was coming, um, the patterns. And we sourced that all from um, Utah, actually. And then when we all got to his billiards life, um, we worked hand in hand with the billiards manufacturer to incorporate the wood that was being used in the billiards table to be in the fixture itself that was hanging over it. Um, so those are the kind of the decorative solutions that we'll go through. Um, the technical solutions, we had a situation in the same home where they had an access panel to the attic that was right in the middle of the room, right where their fixture should be. So we had to come up with an engineering solution to come up with a way to have that chandelier come down very quickly and easily. And so all of these different types of, whether it be material or the design or the functionality of the home, we take all that into consideration when we're trying to design for an individual because at that customization, it really is about making sure that they're getting exactly what they, they're envisioning for their home. And so that's both in the scale, the material, the design, the function, all of the things had to go, have to go in hand in hand. Absolutely. Um, another very notable aspect of the company is that you are still manufacturing both your Hammerton Studio and signature brands in the United States. Now tell me, how important is manufacturing in the US to your brand ethos? So this definitely goes to the previous topic of custom. 50% um, of our business is custom, whether that's a small modification or a complete um, new design similar to what we just talked about. And in order to do custom, we almost have to be here in the US. Um, that allows us to interact with the architect, the designer, the homeowner, and translate that information directly to the artisan that's actually going to be building the product, um, which is very important because when it comes to custom, something that has never been done before, it's all about the nuances. It's all about the small details. It's all about the back and forth communication between do they like this feature or do they like prefer a different feature. And being able to manufacture in the US allows us to change and modify real time. So when we get feedback, we may go into a design and start out with one idea but as we get into the middle of it, it opens up into multiple different new concepts and even potentially new products. And so being able to manufacture in the US is really critical for that aspect. But then another good aspect of manufacturing in the US is that we're so close to the customer when it comes to um, them coming to us and seeing what we do. So as a homeowner, as an example, when they come through the facility with their architect or their designer, and they can actually see the product being built for them. They can, and it's not some hypothetical situation that's on a warehouse shelf of somewhere. They're actually seeing their product or seeing someone else's product being built. It's an eye-opening experience for a lot of these homeowners that have never been in a manufacturing environment. And so as one example, we had one homeowner that was so excited, he wanted to be part of building his own fixture. So in the middle of building his um, great room fixture, he came in and we helped work with him to actually do some of the blacksmithing and bending the steel and heating it up so that when he was in his own home, he was able to point to this fixture and say, I made that part of that fixture. I was part of that process. So little things like that that really make a difference when somebody is truly doing a custom fixture for them. Talk about a hands-on experience. That's very cool. Yes. <laughs> very hands-on. So speaking to a few of your designs, first, I'd love to learn about your optic blown glass collection from the Hammerton Studio brand. Its visual effects from the molten glass ribbon is, it's quite stunning and beautiful. So can you please tell me a little bit more about this process? Yes. So we have three different ways that we do glass in-house. One of them is blown glass. And when we started to first develop our blown glass process here in, 
in the facility, we looked at how can we adapt what we've learned over the years with steel into glass. And the main component that we've touched on is the organic or the outside environment, bringing that into the inside. So with this optic piece of glass, what we really focused on was making sure that we incorporated something that felt very organic. And so this wrapping that we put, this extra layer of glass that is applied to the optic is um, put on in such a way that is very random. So no two pieces of glass are ever exactly the same. And then from a light quality, when the light bulb is inside and it's um, illuminating through the glass, we get these very interesting optics, hence the name of the optic glass. And what that does is it helps distort and change the, the view of that light source, similar to as you look over across over a lake or an ocean or a stream, and you see the water moving um, and the light changes. And as you move around the optic glass, the same thing happens, the light changes, the perspective changes. It's not a stagnant piece of glass anymore. Now it's more of a living object. So returning to the notion of marrying modern and natural elements that we touched upon earlier, something that really makes your cast glass lighting shine, no pun intended, is the notion of authenticity. For example, the Axis and Glacier collections. There is something so real and organic about these pieces, and they do not seem like they're machine fabricated at all. Can you elaborate on these two collections and the importance of authenticity to Hammerton? Yes. So the Glacier Collection is um, another component of our glass, which is called the cast glass. So in that process, what we're doing is the artisan is pulling glass out of the blown glass furnace. And the way they do this is actually by hand, by scooping it up with a big metal ladle. And then what they're doing is pouring that molten glass actually over some of the recycled glass that we've reclaimed through our blown glass process. So um, what it's achieving is um, this very layered effect in the glass. So we have this smooth surface on the bottom and top, but encapsulated in between are these broken pieces of glass that are all individually different and unique again. So every piece of glass, every fixture that somebody receives is unique on its own perspective, as well as the body of the fixture now blending with a very smooth, clean finish of the metal, we get this really nice contrast of an organic piece of glass with a very modern piece of steel, and they help balance themselves in a visual way. And so this, this new process of casting glass is going to really open up so many potentials for us that we haven't even touched on yet, which is exciting for me as a designer because it opens up so many new potential shapes and, and options that I haven't been able to do or experience in just blown glass. Oh, I bet. I bet. Um, I've saved my favorite for last, the gem collection. While I really consider all lighting to be jewelry for the home, this collection, it, it really sparkles and would make any space shine. What inspired you to really make this series? So this one is going almost full circle to the back, to the beginning of this conversation when we talked about custom. So this particular home, um, it was situated in Bell, Colorado. And this designer we'd worked with for years developing multiple custom projects. And she gave me a call one day and she said, whatever we've done in the past, whatever you have in your current catalog, I don't want it. This homeowner is very particular, he's an art collector. And one of the central pieces in this home is going to be this half million dollar Del Chihuly sculpture. And she said, so that is going to be setting the bar for everything we do in this, in this house. Wow. And so every piece of light fixture cannot compete with that sculpture, but it definitely needs to stand out. And so I went and I actually stayed on site for a week and designed with her real time, looking at the space, looking at the environment, looking at the mountains, looking at how they lived, what, how they wanted to experience their home when they got there. And the designer and I came to the conclusion that we still needed to keep this outdoor environment of Bell, Colorado true, which is to bring that outdoor in. And so I came up with this idea. I, I put my foot in my mouth, like I do many times when it comes to design. I said, what if we do this? And I said, what if we make a glass stone? And she said, that is an absolutely incredible idea. 
The problem was I came back and I said, okay, I went to our glass blowers and I said, how do we make a glass stone? Long story short, two or three months later, we're still not getting anywhere close to what I envisioned. And so eventually I ended up making a clay sculpture of the form I wanted. And then I was able to take that to our custom team and have them repurpose that into a metal mold. And so I was able to use our metal manufacturing to actually incorporate something in glass that then we could blow the glass into this form and create this final object that looked like a glass stone. Hence the name, the gem collection. The gem collection. Yes. Well, wonderful. Well, Levi, it was such a pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you so much for joining us on this segment of Makers. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. My name is Brittany Chevalier McIntyre. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Katherine Gibbon, Senior Style and Market Editor at Lux Interiors and Design Magazine. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Makers segment on Design TV. Today, I am talking with Armin arto Alasian, the owner with his brother Vod of Arto, the makers of truly unique handcrafted tiles, bricks, and papers. Everything is made here in the US, and I know a lot of hard work goes into what you guys do. Your offerings really range from very custom and niche to products you've had in the line from the get-go. Uh, the company also has very interesting beginnings that, that um, start with your father. But today, your designs are used throughout the world in commercial projects, restaurants, hotels, as well as in beautiful residential homes. So Arman, thank you for being here. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> really appreciate you. One of the stories my dad would tell is, um, about having a shop on the second floor in Cairo. And uh, when someone would actually walk up the stairs into the, into the showroom and actually just look and leave, that was a, a loan opportunity to, to engage somebody because uh, there's a lot of choices back then for commerce. And today, um, uh, just having anybody's ear for 30 seconds is a big, a big gratefulness because um, there is so much distractions in the world before and before COVID, sorry for dating the show, but before That's COVID, true. there was plenty of distractions and now there's even more distractions. So thanks for the opportunity. I'm, I'm really looking forward to chatting, but do you want to just briefly talk about Arto and what you do and, you know, really how your father began the company? Cool. Um, my dad's, uh, I already mentioned it a little bit before, he's uh, from Egypt. Um, he started off uh, being born in Alexandria, Egypt. His father was oh. orphaned and um, was rescued out in um, Syrian desert or Armenian blood. Um, this is in the 1900s, early 1900s, and um, got rescued, by, adopted by a family, Armenian family in Alexandria, and um, got a second lease on life. Uh, when um, Egypt fell apart in the 50s, uh, my dad left there to beautiful Beirut. Hmm. When Beirut fell apart, in the late fifth, in the fifties, he left Beirut and came to the States, went to New York, no offense to New York, but didn't care for it. it. Wasn't, it wasn't the Delta of Alexandria. He went to Houston, a little too humid for him, uh, but ended up in LA, Los Angeles, California, when no one lived here. It was imagine the same weather and no one lived here. But, uh, well, that sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we're here. He's a industrious guy. He's going to school to be a, um, a airplane mechanic at LAX, right? So he's going to school at, at night. He's a milkman in the day. So he's, uh, he's doing DoorDash and going to college, right? He's doing Uber Eats and going to college. And um, he meets a woman, not my mother, um, Irene Birkenbreiter. And she's a, a famous as being a, a sculptural um, artist in, in clay. And a lot of times the clay back then was always a a figurine it might have been a weird looking horse but it was a horse so she was part of this movement that was doing abstract art 
um, in clay. So really like Jackson Pollock, but in clay. So no, you know, not, not a, you know, three headed horse and calling it new art. No, it was really abstract art, but to pay the bills, they, um, she uh, would create murals and put a clay brick veneer around it. And our first skew was a clay brick veneer. On my dad's milk route, he would show um, uh, the restaurants and the moms on the west side of Los Angeles when it was, before it was the west side, um, when it was a sleepy town, um, the bricks. And we put bricks, he put, he made the bricks and put the bricks in the houses and quit his milkman job and Rest here we just, are. What a cool story. I, I really love that. Um, you know, humble beginnings, I feel like, you know, to have you guys grow the company to what it is today is, is really impressive. But, you know, I think it's always important to hear, hear a company's roots and where you started. And you, you guys clearly have a good foundation, but I wanna pivot for a sec and talk a little bit about your products and what you guys do. You guys have a lot of different products, really everything from paint to tile, to bricks, to mosaics, to cladding, murals. And I know, I know a lot in between, and I'm sure the process is a little bit different. But can you can you walk us through the process a little bit in terms of like you know making an actual product? I I have a few of your projects that I really love. One being the Ace Hotel. I don't know if you want to start with that or if you want to just talk a little bit in general about your your production process. Well, uh, I'll get into the details of the Ace, but the primary way we create product is based on on you liking something that you can't get. Mm. Um, so a lot of our things are uh, items, tiles, art, artifacts we manufacture are standard, uh, you know, paving and, and flooring. And, but then you want to add some charm or uniqueness to the project. And that's where you as a customer design that. So like an Ace Hotel, my segue, eh? at the Ace Hotel, um, there is, we'll call it 85% off the shelf product. Okay. Still hard to find. I mean, now, back then it was hard to find. Now everyone's got something that looks like it, but. Back then it was hard to find. But what makes it very unique is the, the architect um, actually embedded into the um, deco pieces that look art deco, mm -hmm. uh, the, the words A-C-E. And frankly, I didn't see it till two years later on. Someone <laughs> pointed it out to me, I, you know, clueless. Um, but the customer knew it was there and that's what mattered, which was really cool. So that's an example of the process is, hey, we have a, uh, an established uh, amount of products, but then if you want to put a cherry on top to make it your unique project, because for sometimes when you're when you're building your last home or your fifth home or you're building a hospitality location, a restaurant or a very nice hotel, you you want to add a little charm and mix it your own fingerprint, and Sorry. and that's why you know the magazine is called Lux, right? Because people want a little bit things different, there and it's not always have to be overpriced. It can be affordable um, differentiation. And, and we offer that. Yeah, I think people do want do want items that are somewhat bespoke, somewhat special, somewhat custom, which I know is what you guys do. And another project I really love with these beautiful arches is La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. I think I said that right in LA. Um, it almost looks like an Otomi pattern, like a Mexican pattern. How, what, what's the story here? So the story there is that my brother Vaud was involved. Vaud and Alex were involved with that project that were mm -hmm. customer facing and literally uh, the customer was looking for a mural uh, in a, in that, I think in that case, it was about speed. You know, mm -hmm. the mural work is hard to find tile artists. Sometimes it's hard to find someone that can execute it in a short period of time. So all we offer that really on that job is a, we can do custom tile work. You know, it's, uh, it's made to the customer spec. We went back and forth on how they wanted it. But what we offered was speed. I think, you know, if you had a year to make it great, I think we had 45 days to make that wall. Okay. Wow. So, um, turn that's around. what we offer in that job are, are, you know, I always make a joke that our hand painted tiles are our most highest, com highest price commodity product product. It's, it's not that unique sometimes, but what's unique about it is the service and the ability to get things done quickly, custom made on that job. I, right. I saw, uh, last year at Christmas in person and the pictures that you've seen aren't even close to what it looks like in person. They're actually, the arches are really tall. I'm, I'm I'm a tall five eleven footer, about five ten footer now, I guess. But it's a big arches. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love that project, and I understand you guys also recreate a lot of historic looks for projects, right? Recreate them for homes or whatnot. 
Can you talk a little bit about that? I'm not sure if the Normandy cream is a recreation, but to me it looks somewhat historic with like the terracotta and the coloring, but talk a little bit about that aspect of your company, if you don't mind. Yeah, so the core of our business is Los Angeles, California. God help us. <laughs> Los Angeles, California is, 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 our, is our core. Yeah. And everything that we, a lot of our early, actually that, that last plaza is a LA project. So we are the backdrop of the city. Uh, sometimes we know about where they are. Sometimes we aren't, you know, they're on TV or on movies or just it's the back. And so that, that San Felipe pattern you saw at the Ohio Valley Inn or any of those projects, we didn't invent that. Those were established in the twenties or thirties or 1890s in the area. And it couldn't be reproduced. And if it was, it, uh, I'm still less expensive than, than south of the border on some shapes. Uh, like a 12 by 12, you know, that's a commodity. But any of those weird shapes you see in our catalog through the series, um, those were affordable. Being made in LA, um, being made with, with uh, people that uh, I hope like coming to work um, and treating them well and looking them in the eyes and saying thank you, that's a big deal. And I, you know, I make a joke about blood diamonds um, we don't make blood tiles here. You know, we, we, people here, they may hate me as a person, but the job is a real job. Sorry. I want to touch on that for a sec. Cause I know, you know, everything you do is made in America is made in LA, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, even more so today that that's pretty important to companies. Why, why is that integral to your success? I'm small minded, I guess, and, and a, a, a softy and, and a romantic. I mean, if I had, if I was smart and, and um, cutthroat, I'd move somewhere else. Right. And then collect the margin. I, I love my city. I love the people. Uh, I like to eat. This is a great town to eat in. So I, I, the tile is a result of the neighborhood and the people around it. And um, I hope that the product, the way we translate our product via marketing and our voice on every platform is we're LA. We're not trying, or we're, we're this area. We, we like where we live. It's not a happenstance. We we're, we're being punished, but we're still staying. I hear you. I think it's so important to, you know, support what's happening in your backyard. That's, that's Lux's model. Everyone wants to, to support regionally, support locally. So, so bravo for having those LA roots, but You've also said to me, Armin, that it's really all about the people, right? <laughs> and I completely agree with you. You know, that's why I love my job. That's why I love this industry. But, you know, what do your employees and your customers mean to you? I think I started off a little bit with it. And that is, I, I don't, um, I don't uh, discount eyeballs and attention. So on the customer side, they're the, the root of all of the things that we have going on. Um, is we're trying to satisfy the customer. And sometimes you get a hubris of being a maker that I make this and they come to see me, but really the customer is, is the king and listening to them and bring, being grateful for them. And then the people that make it, you know, if I, I believe, I believe when you see a product in the store that's handcrafted, uh, being romantic, you can see when, when there was actual love put into the product or at least not hate, you know, not the worst, father not the worst employer when it's not the you know i'm not the best employer but maybe the, not the worst when you, you can see it in products sometimes you know how it's either packaged or how how yeah. it even sits in the box or how it looks on the floor or you can see that the, so uh it's a selfish thing i mean it's truly taking care of the customer and trying to trying to be a good boss which we fail at um those are noble causes and we try and do it and we we fail i think our, all we have going for us is that we don't mind saying that we um, suck and can get better. Well, it's all trial and error, right? That's how you learn. That's how you get better. So I agree. It's a, it's an important part of the business. But, like this um, interview. I'm doing terrible, aren't I? No, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Um, Armin, this has been so interesting. You're wonderful. I, I really like chatting with you and, and hearing a little bit more about Arto and all that you guys do. Um, a big thank you for joining us on our Makers segment today and stay tuned for what's next on Design TV. Thank you. Hello, 
I'm Helene Oberman, Managing Director of Interior Design Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to Product Live. This is our series that delves into the products and trends grabbing the industry, and in real time, looking at the minds behind the design. Today, we're looking to take a trip from New York City to Italy and back again stateside. And guess what? You don't have to leave the comfort of your very own home office. As I like to tell my manufacturer friends, if you can't bring the designer to the factory, well, why don't you bring the factory to them and we're here to do just that. Come along for the ride with our partners from Stone Source, a 30 plus year old design driven company that provides natural stone, tile and slabs to the A&D community and come along and share the journey for their new collection, Equus, and how it came to life. Our tour guides for today, Luca Miorini from Terra Tinta Group in Fiorano, and Ron Solano, Vice President of All Product Design. Benvenuti, welcome you guys. So nice to see you both. Thank you, thank you. So we begin our journey in Fiorano Modenese, home of Ferrari, Luciano Pavarotti, and the Terra Tinta Group. So Luca, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Well, uh, first of all, thanks for the introduction. <laughs> we are, um, I mean, uh, we are a company based uh, here in the heart of the ceramic uh, tile district. Um, when I was 26 years old, uh, on 2008, I founded the company. And at the end, a few months ago, let's say more than one year ago, we started up with a new brand called Sartoria, which has been focused more towards mid-high interior design and architecture. And that's where also we, we met uh, uh, with some source. Um, today, we work in more than 50 countries all over the world, but we are pretty new also in the US market. So Ron, I'm curious, so this new collection, Equus, was this the first time that you guys had partnered with Terra Tinta Group on a collection? Yes, it's actually the, the, the first time we've done business uh, stateside. Their concentration had really been Northern Europe with most of their products. Uh, and the last, what, maybe three or four years, they've, con they've come more to the US. Um, and listen, this was a challenging thing to do and we needed the right people. Uh, and Luca loved this collection as much as I did, like right off the bat, there wasn't even a question. Uh, and so it was, that part was easy. Mm -hmm. Everything else after, maybe not so much. <laughs> well, you know, it, but proof in point, and you know, obviously the audience will get to see the collection itself. You can see that challenges or not, it ended up being really strong collaboration between the two, and it really shows um, in the ultimate product. But this new collection, Equus, it was designed by tile extraordinaire, Catherine Braconier. And she, had she really worked with either of you? Because I know she has a very strong background in tile. Had she worked with you um, on a collection previously? Uh, we had, we've been working with Kat probably 10 years. Uh, and she designed several stone mosaics uh, for us that were you know, very, very successful. Uh, so over, over the years, getting to know her and just kind of her passion, we would tease every once in a while, why don't you make something in ceramic? Well, let's think about uh, what else we could do. And so really in the end, uh, uh, we were excited when she had this idea and the collaboration continues. And so Equus, um, Ron, is part of the Stone Source Originals, which I know is very yes. near and dear to the company. Can you really tell us more about this product program? Sure. Um, Stone Source Originals probably came, came about uh, with that title, specific title, probably about four years ago. Uh, and a team I'm leading, and whether it's an outside designer or in-house uh, uh, team, where we're coming up with things that we see trends in the market, uh, being architecturally driven, uh, having products that are yours exclusively is a tough, is tougher to do these days. Uh, and so the originals just made a lot more sense. Uh, so this will be our fourth uh, originals collection, uh, Equus. Uh, we have three other ones. Actually, the fir very first one we did, we won an award. Uh, so we were pretty excited about that. And, and uh, uh, I'm hopeful uh, that, that Equus not only wins an award, but we, we sell an awful lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, hence the name Equus. 
the inspiration for the collection was really drawn from Kat's love of horses. Um, and you can see this direct sort of relationship to this equine lifestyle really into the, the patterns of the tile designs, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, she is an equestrian. She's an equestrian jumper. Uh, she's an avid sports uh, person, uh, bicyclist. So she's a very, very active individual. But yeah, this, this is obviously really, really personal uh, uh, for her. Uh, and even the imagery uh, that you'll eventually see, or even when she presented to us the, the concept initially, uh, all the imagery was just fantastic. And it was really horses and stables, and but just these t still shots that were like, I, I get the connection. And then to have a piece of the product called hoof and something called field, and then pave is, is the, you know, the, the flooring component. So uh, it, it was well connected and, and well thought out uh, up front from her to us. So uh, yeah, I think she's, uh, she's fantastic. I mean, it seems really fortuitous like given this time period where, you know, we are finding ourselves spending so much time indoors to have this sort of direct connection to the natural world that you can really draw from the Equus collection. Yeah, and it certainly seems like that's, that's a trend at the moment. I mean, uh, uh, here in New York City, I haven't been in the city in quite some time, but uh, even with the restaurants building uh, the, the sidewalk uh, uh, sitting areas, um, so clearly the outdoors has become a lot more important to everybody. I know even for myself, uh, spending more time uh, at home, but in the backyard, in the parks. Uh, uh, so nature is, is really, really important. And uh, Equus is a clear connection. Uh, Kat spent three months uh, almost exclusively uh, um, uh, when she was training and raising uh, this particular horse. And so she lived really, she was in a barn every day. She was in a stable every day. She was in a field. Um, so I think everybody wants a connection to nature. But like really shifting to the production process, like you first took these initial drawings that Kat did, which were really obviously inspired by her equestrian lifestyle. Um, and you fashioned a mold from these to, in order to create the tiles themselves, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes, I mean, every nice project starts from a good idea and then uh, gets to drawings. But then to come to real, uh, you need uh, also some uh, physical tools, like we say the custom molds uh, we created. And it's been quite, uh, quite tough because even if it's a single line, it's like three different families of product at the end uh, in terms of technology also uh, used and the way of uh, pressing the product so uh, basically the material looks uh, easy to say when we say the clay is pressed into the mold to get the, fi the finished product but then in between and afterwards there are a lot of uh, complications so um, this was a very ambitious um, project since the beginning I mean I was uh, really happy to see the first drawings and I knew in terms of technologies to be used we could have challenges um, but uh, I mean and fun of it I mean today we look for uh, nice uh, original stories to tell behind the product and uh, uh, sometimes uh, to be original means also to have uh, uh, difficult products to produce and also the mix between uh, what we try always to do to mix uh, traditional ways of producing, of producing uh, traditional techniques together with more innovative ones uh, is also what is Equus uh, about. I mean, it's been a, a nice journey. I always say from the idea to the finished product is really a nice journey. Well, no, it's interesting. Obviously you were up for the challenge though to, to create this collection and I mean, was it really, because you, you speak towards the fact that like, was there difficulty sort of capturing something like the, the tile field, which has this very specific sort of pattern in it? Like, did you have to utilize any new technologies or techniques in order to capture that? I mean, of course, the, the, the field and hoof, uh, where they have this kind of structure, especially the slope uh, inside the product makes uh, 
uh, made sometimes complicated to have the same uh, weight from the press on the product. So to keep uh, sometimes uh, the edges straight it was quite uh, uh, challenging and that's why sometimes we look at the product on top of it but we had to work also on the back side. Well Luca, Iran, how long did the actual process take really from those initial drawings that came from Catherine to really finalizing the actual tile? I remember in the first meeting yeah we run we had uh, here in Italy I think 13-14 uh, uh, months at the end uh, from the uh, first view of the drawings until the first big production, let's say. So I know we kind of touched on it already, but can we just go over, so how many tile patterns there are, and then um, what body types are used for them? In terms of uh, technology, we talk about the support is 100% porcelain. So that was not clear uh, at first stage because uh, we, couldn't, we could go in different directions, but we decided we decided for porcelain and um, giving uh, much importance to the color we wanted to, to achieve. I mean, uh, um, the, the, the right green, the right blue, and also in the, especially in the pavé, um, in the pavé uh, line, we, uh, we have for every one of the three different items, the three different colors, four shades. And, to get uh, every shade uh, took uh, many, many small runs in production to achieve the exact exact color that we wanted. Uh, well, I mean, you can definitely, well, first of all, that blue and the green are super sophisticated and really beautiful, yeah. but you yeah. guys are able Thanks. to like get that. So you can, it's beautiful. And you can also see that there's really this direct link between obviously what Kat's seeing every day when she's at the stables and when she's riding her horses in terms of the color palette, like it's very much tied to the horse barn. Exactly. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I mean, ultimately, if you, if you think about the blue and the green, it's obviously the sky and the, and the grass and the fields. But I think the, the concentration of trying to get those two really correct uh, uh, and the right blue and the right green uh, also, I think we wound up with, uh, if handsome is a good word to say for, for color, uh, in a sense, I think the, the blue and the green are just, you know, really fantastic. And I don't think we've seen those colors really in the market either in, in our industry. So even more exciting on, on top of that. Well, um, I wanted to actually go back to what Luca was just saying um, about the glazes, because I know those are really incredibly important. One, for capturing the color, but also, you know, the fact that you had these combinations of matte versus glossy, and when do you use them, or use them together, because I know Huff uses both. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the roof, or in the sculpt, what we call uh, the, let's say the decor for the for the wall use we had this fantastic combination between the matte and the gloss uh, gloss effect which is a a, gla um, a glass based glaze on uh, this uh, side of the tile uh, inside this imprint which uh, has been challenging and uh, that was was one of the reasons because uh, to make all matte on all uh, glossy would have been easier well i certainly find the glazes but even with the shapes and the colors, like there's both a really direct link to nature with the inspiration and the coloring and you know some of the patterning, but also like when you look at them and, and the fact it almost looks in, like you can make infinite sort of patterns on your walls and your floor with it, depending on how you, you combine them. Um, because I know there's also some sort of flat non like foundational um, yes. tiles to, to go along with them, but it's also quite graphic and really super modern in design as well, depending on the patterns that you correct, um, excuse me, that you create. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's, that's a great point, um, because I think that's also, if you think about the story of stables and barns, it's not exactly the most modern uh, uh, thing you would, you would imagine. Um, but I do think uh, uh, it's just a modern interpretation, right, in the end. Uh, the colors, there's tons of energy, I think, in the colors. There's energy in the, in the flow of the material when you see it installed. Uh, the movement, the, the, the shapes, the three-dimensional pieces that happen. Um, again, I'm, I'm thrilled. So <laughs> uh, a year's worth of work and, and you know, to, to be really, really happy in the end, it's, it's great. 
And then just to wrap this up, so um, Ron, how do you ultimately see the collection being used? The best question of the day, perhaps. Everywhere, where <laughs> wouldn't you use it? And, and, and the upside, so, so obviously bathrooms and kitchen backsplashes, the material could be used on the floor. Um, but speaking about, you know, bringing outdoors in and that sort of thing, because it is porcelain, you can put this, you know, outside applications are certainly possible uh, uh, for, for the material. So um, commercial, hospitality, hopefully the restaurant industry. Well, I, I definitely feel like there'll be a lot of uh, wide appeal for the collection and congratulations. It's really beautiful. And I, I really thank you both for your insight into this new collection and really sharing the journey from, you know, how it went from inspiration with Kat's love of horses, you know, obviously to the final product. And certainly to our audience out there, thank you so much for coming along for the ride around the world from New York to Italy and back again. And please check out the Stone Source website to learn more about the Alice collection.